I would like to welcome people to online stock market course uh, basic of a stock market lecture series one my name is Alok Kumar and I am your online trainer for this uh, basic course today I am going to discuss very interesting topic about uh, a basic understanding of a stock market and uh, I believe that you are too excited uh, let's start we are going to learn six basic very interesting uh, fundamental topic related to financial market or you can see the stock market so from now the our objective of learning is Our objective of learning is to discuss about basic concept of capital market, fundamental analysis, microeconomics, derivatives, technical analysis, and financial planning. I love it. I believe that you enjoy as well to learn about the all six very basic and very powerful topic for uh, start to investing in stock markets a traditional stock market so let's start to one by one a little bit information about uh, the capital market a capital market is a financial market where savings and investments are moved between suppliers of capital uh, that means who invest the money in a market that is called the supplier of capital and those who are in need of capital that is the basically the company they require the investment so they are the borrower of the capital so basically this capital market is a combination of two things one a primary market and other is secondary market so let's discuss about the what is the primary market a primary market where new securities are issued so before you listen about the IRCTC they issue the first IPO initial public offer and then after list the company in a national stock exchange and the Bombay stock exchange as well to collect money from the investors to raise a capital from the investors so the primary market the companies sell new stocks and bonds to the public for the first time such as uh, with an initial public offer that is the IPO and the secondary markets where already issued securities are traded between investors so the NSC and the BSC National Stock Exchange and the Bombay Stock Exchange are the example of the secondary markets where the all listed company trade the securities for the investors so now our the second thing is the fundamental analysis so you know that when we invest money to somewhere so before investment we need to gather information about where to invest why to invest and what we will get so this is the all about the fundamental analysis so it is the method to determining a stock's real or fair market value. The value of a stock is actually the real or it is the fair. So the price is traded above the real value or fair value or we can say that the price is traded uh, below the value. So here we analyzes all the aspect of the company's data price 
earning reports before tax profit after tax profit liabilities debt and the all such things so this is the typically a study about the overall state of economy and then the strength of a specific industry before uh, concentrating on individual company performance to arrive at fair market value for the stock so during analysis phase what we use for the analysis we use revenue earning future growth and return on equity profit margin and data to determine a company's underlying value and potential for the future growth mergers acquisitions so all of this data is available in the company's financial statements so we discuss later in the next uh, lecture uh, in a fundamental analysis separately so here now we a little bit uh, understand about the macroeconomics so it is the basically the behavior of a country and how its policies affect the economy as whole you listen uh, previous uh, three months uh, before our finance minister they uh, uh, cut the corporate taxes from uh, 30 uh, 25 percent to up to 15 percent so this policies affect the whole a uh, corporates so company why we the top of approach and so we know about the basically the rate of the inflation or the stimulate the economic growth so we here in a microeconomics theory we understand the company uh, sorry the indian economy policy policy factors uh, growth all the related things so now the next topics we discuss uh, derivatives so the derivatives are basically a contract uh, between two parties uh, with its uh, value generally determined by an underlying asset price and uh, the common derivative includes the future contract and options uh, let us example uh, uh, everyone listen about we are trade we are trading in a futures and options uh, futures they have the contract for the certain time period like a one month two month or three months sometime the six months so here the value of derivative a drive from the performance of an asset index interest interest rates equity option and uh, it's a, a value from the underlying stock price so value of the equity option fluctuate as the price of the underlying stock fluctuates so like uh, let us take an example uh, tata motor they trading in a national stock exchange of uh, bombay stock exchange in a cash market and as well as the future markets and the option there are the three type of the uh, the value company's value one the spot market cash market and the other is the futures and the other is the call option so we are going to detail in the next lecture for uh, this uh, derivative so now the next thing is the technical analysis so the technical analysis when we want to invest in a any company or anything any such kind of the products so we gather information from the historic data so here same as in technical analysis of a stock and trains attempt to predict 
price movements providing early signals for buy and sell strategies with the information needed to market a profit sorry a need needed to make a profit we apply tool in a different type of chart uh, such as uh, we can use a candlestick chart a Ranko charts Hakanese charts point and figure charts line and break charts and uh, much more kind of the a study method like the stochastics uh, rsi relative strength index values and macad and uh, sometimes we use the bollinger band theories and the fibonacci retrenchment so these the these all are the technical aspect of understanding so we used to calculate and understand and anticipate the future market price moment either going to upside or going to downside so for the price anticipation we use the all technical method and tools for particular stocks a company in a certain time frame even in a day minutes hour and a week month and the, for the long period year two year five and ten years as well so now the last topic is the financial planning this is the most important part when we want to be invest so we need to know about the discipline financial planning steps and behavior so we use the different method and strategies to different financial market in order to achieve long term financial goal so this is my personal recommendation to new investors individual before going to jump in a stock market you must have to understand all six topic of uh, the basic of stock markets the capital markets fundamental analysis microeconomics derivatives technical analysis and the financial planning so from now we are try to cover all those all these topics so first we have to be understand the market because when we buy and sell from where we buy and sell buying and selling is performed in any such kind of the market so very traditional we use a vegetable mandi a vegetable marketplace so we observe how the marketplace is work so the next thing is how to we trade in a market so what is the basically the mandi or the marketplace let's uh, try to understand the traditional mandi like a vegetable mandi market nearby your place how it work and uh, Uh, let's uh, start my friend look at this picture you see a regular vegetable mandi and i believe that every individual are familiar with the vegetable mandi it is also called the trading hub in indian economic system mandi are categorized as mandi for grain like a uh, rice wheat and uh, sorry this is going to mandi for grains like a uh, rice wheat vegetable and uh, timber germs and diamonds and uh, mandi for 
animal, cattle, goat, horses, camels, buffaloes, and poultry. So, all organized Monday regulated by a national common market in agriculture commodities in India and the street Monday regulated by the state district local authorities label. The key function of all Monday is buy and sell something available in a Monday or marketplace. So let's understand function of so-called Monday or a market. So now the next uh, slide, we try to understand the Monday. Here is the vegetable Monday. So I uh, try to correlate from the stock market. So the basic understanding how the Monday and the market work because the all market is uh, uh, looks like the same and the behavior is the same. So now look at here and tell me what will be observed in veg vegetable Monday nearby your home. Uh, let me help you. So here what I uh, draw, what I uh, draw is uh, basically uh, vegetable Monday. So this is our vegetable Monday. So what I observe here, uh, we basically not down the some area, not down some area in a vegetable Monday. So every market have the some opening time. So here I assume the timing and uh, somewhere market is going to open on time according to local authorities or streets so i use the standard time and uh, let us the assume market is open at the certain a uh, 9 am certain a uh, 9 am so market open from a previous day closing high low price what does it mean it means a uh, before one day before market close at the certain price let us the, take an example of a uh, potato potato so potato price is 20 rupees a kilo in a previous then then uh, today it's open from the 20 either the below or either the above the 20 price and now the start to trading at the time 9 a.m. So the market part participant start to trade. So market participant like you, me and all are the market participant in regular vegetable Monday. So from the daily needs we are going to Monday and buy vegetable, potato, tomato and all such kind of the, the agro products. So now the thing is what we observe in the regular Monday as well the price vegetable price going up and down according to supply or demand of a specific vegetable like uh, the potato all time is trading in a Monday up and down sometime it's going to be rupees 15 per kg or sometime it goes to rupees 30 per kg all know about even the uh, uh, tomato sometime it's uh, going to be uh, 15 or 20 rupees per kg and sometime goes up to 60 rupees per kg so the price is going to up and down according to supply demands and a specific vegetables as well and vegetable price reacts according to customer volume uh, when we observe if we go early in the market the price sometime going to high and if you are going to to closing at the market price going to sometime down or sometime high so market price or the momentum react on a specific occasion like a festival in a uh, like a durga puja dipavali or sometime the eid or, or the christmas 
the particular products the price is going to up and a specific vegetable price behaves according to season like a strawberry mango the, these are the seasonal fruits so the price is behave according to season if they came to early in a, a starting of the season the price is high and the when the season is going to close or end the price is uh, from low to high so the market price directly affected by the positive and negative news uh, yes in a poultry if the some kind of the disease we listen about the some kind of the disease in a in a chicken so the price going to the down uh, 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 tremendously so the market price affected directly to positive and negative news sometimes the regulations policies sometimes the taxation the gst and the, all, all such kind of the things and the monday is regulated by the local district state authorities and the monday going to close at the fixed time of, of 5 pm this is the assume time somewhere the monday is going to close 11 pm or uh, 10 pm 7 pm so this is the assumed price so here we try to draw the price up and down the moments sometimes the price is this is the, this is the area where the price is very high nearby the 20 rupees per kg start from the 7 or 8 rupees and now going to close and uh, low and high this is the time frame when the price is going to trade it in a vegetable money so this is the assumption this is my assumption and i try to correlate with the stock market for the better understanding so now the second things we need to understand the buyer psychology because nobody want to be a buy a higher rate in a high high side nobody want to buy everyone want to buy a cheap price and every seller want to sell at the high price this is the correlation between the buyer and seller so before going to next topic we need to develop understand the buyer psychology how we decide and how we try to uh, buy any uh, products so let's uh, hear the next uh, slides uh, we are try to discuss about the buyer psychology so this is the coming a little bit a problem yes the retail buyer psychology so let's start to discuss uh, let's start to discuss about retail buyer psychology how are we take decision before buying and after buying some specific products even vegetable clothes electronic device or equipment or even the company stock bond mutual funds exchange traded fund so we, so i say in a psychology the cognitive decision process and intuitions how we think how our brain take a decision this is the all about the co uh, cognitive decision process so look at uh, look at diagram start from the beginning start from beginning here this is the start from the beginning identify object o so the thoughts process start relate to a specific item then our brain cell and neurons help to identify object o and like object o means something take a uh, let's take an example you want to buy uh, any mobile phone 
So first, your brain have to decide what you buy. So identify object. What you buy? You want to buy a mobile phone. And here the O represents some products, a specific company share as well. Like if you want to buy uh, any company, a specific stock like uh, Tata Motors or any SVI stocks or shares. So the brain cell identify as per based information stored in subconscious mind or memory cell. The previous information related to object, related to product like mobile phone or related to the company stock SBI or Tata Motors, anything. So then after they jump to search criteria and they try to identify the attributes and attributes that means what type if I am talking about the mobile phone which type of the mobile phone the color size technical features memory price these all are the attributes and and the durability as well then after they start to search here from here they start to goes from here to search criteria of type of the choice which type of the choice all process done as uh, based on data collected in identification process so all data when we identify so if choice is set then jump to the next setup the quantify or evaluate the adequacy or the similar alternative option uh, quantify the past information about required as per need and fitted in a budget so this is the quantifying process what we required the need and budget and then after jump to adequacy a or C this is the alternative a or here the C and check satisfactory for particular purpose we satisfy for the particular products and then after jump to the select a decision process from here select decision process to take a decision and decision denoted by the D as the function of A and C, the alter alternative choice and the search criteria choice. In a both case, we quantify the size, value, price and evaluate the satisfaction level as we satisfy. Then we decide here. So that means the satisfy both conditions, then start to evaluate. Then start to evaluate satisfaction of D start to evaluate satisfaction of D either we satisfy again if the condition met then cognitive decision process map with memories and final order is placed if condition is not met then follow again from A to C so it is the totally depends on accuracy of information related to product of company data if data or information is in accurate then brand sale uh, gave option that is called the confusion state of mind in this case our intuitive uh, instincts uh, come into function 
chance of mistake is going to increase. In a confusion state of mind, our chance of error, chance of mistakes is going to increase. Why this is increased? Because the mind, they are not able to be evaluate the satisfaction. So that's why we move to and fro between the alternative choice or, or desired. So this is the process of uh, buying process in any product. In particular, a stock related, what we, uh, how we buy, our buying decision based on on market research and wisdom someone have or advice by someone, anyone or expert like an investment advisor or according to needs, fear of price change in the future. Sometimes some uh, amateur buyers, they buy early or they buy at uh, top of the markets because they have a fear the price going to change in a future and believe that price is going to up in a future buy without think and start to gather information later. So these six things what I personally uh, think about even I face this such kind of the problems before going to buying decision. So here we uh, talk about now our the country topic, the marketplace. How many type of the marketplace available in India and even the Asia and North America and European countries. So we say these all are the exchange. These all are the exchanges. So now in America we see the new New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, NYSC. In Europe, London Stock Exchange and Asia, uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange in a Japan, Shanghai Stock Exchange in a China, Hong Kong Stock Exchange in a Hong Kong, Shenzhen Stock Exchange in a China, Bombay Stock Exchange in a India, National Stock Exchange in a India and Singapore Stock Exchange in a Singapore. So these these all are these all are. Uh, exchange these all are exchange these all are exchange where the securities are buy and sell so what we look here in a bombay stock exchange and National Stock Exchange, how the price and moment is up and down from the starting. So, like I took, I'll uh, take a look, a uh, view about the Bombay Stock Exchange. The Bombay Stock Exchange is the very old exchange, it established in 1875 and more than 6,000 companies is listed and uh, second st uh, stock exchange name is in India is the uh, NSC as well as uh, national stock exchange. So what I am trying to show here, look at here from the 1990s, sorry 1980s, this is the 1980s. The price is only 148.25 rupees. Think about this is the Sensex. Today, the value of Sensex is near about 39,000. And then, after, see the growth 1981, 227, 
and see here the 90 90s 1048 only can you believe only the 1000 points sensex in 1990s and then after 1991 and see the 1998 it goes to 3658 rupees and then after 99 goes to 5000 and 2000 again the 3900 so this is the duration this is the duration from 99 to 2000 price goes to 1002 up to 5000 the 5x in a 10 years price goes to 5x so now let us uh, look here the next after the 2000s the after the 2000 the price is 3491 then 2000 uh, this is the data the february price is 3500 and 2004 uh, 5850 and 2006 price 10000 about to, in a 6 year in a 6 year again price going to 2x in index and after 2008 price going to 20000 so this is the period from 6 to 8 from 6 to 8 again the two times and this is the also the period when the markets going to crash this is the market going to crash and after the crash market again the price goes down to to 12000 and then after goes to 19000 as well then ups and down ups and down the market going to from the 2010 to 2020 2020 price going to touches 40000 ever 41000 again in a 10 year period price going to 2x so now let us uh, look here the today price the 17th fab price is 41000 and the 26th fab price is 39 1888 after the correction in February so now how we get a return how many we get a return in a th last a three year from the census data you can see here in a six month we get a return ab about 7.4 percent in a one year we get a return about 11.20 percent two year 16.90 percent not bad even the fixed deposits we get only the 6.5 or 8 percent and three years near about approximately 40 percent so if we invest in a fixed deposit we get only near about the 30 percent in a duration of the three years sorry uh, it's a near about uh, to, uh, 24 or 25 percent at the rate of uh, 7.25 percent FT rate so now look at here the sensex index a bank index s p bsc bank index what we get in a six month 10 point 10 percent 11 percent nearby in a one year we get a 15 percent wow it's amazing 15 percent and then in a two year we get a 20 percent a three years we get the 48.80 percent approximately approximately 49 percent in a past three years so look at here how our economy is growing or how the banking sector is growing and investors get return 
in the last three years. So now take a look in a National Stock Exchange historical data. So the, now the NSC chart, we NSC start from the 1992 and the traded, I gather the data from the 1st October 1998, the price is only 904. And then after the 2000, it goes to 1689, 2004, 1945, 2006, it is uh, 3557. And now the 2010, 6000s approximately the 5 5.2 or 5.3 x and now from the 2010 to 20 approximately 12,000 and ever so going to price in a 2x so now uh, take a look in uh, the different sectors a uh, nifty 50 how much we get a return in a uh, last six month approximately 6.70% uh, one year 8.40% two year 11% 11.5% and three year 32.60% so near about the 30% so if we say our Indian economy uh, GDP growth is near about the 6 or 7% then in a three month we get a 20% level so we are here to beat inflation we are here to beat inflation so now take a look in other different index nifty it in a six month four percent three percent and in a two year thirty percent and three year fifty four percent maximum we get the return fifty four percent in a nifty index and then after to uh, take a look uh, a nifty service sector again six month eight percent one year fourteen percent two year twenty two percent twenty two point six percent six zero percent and three year fifty point three zero percent and other sector like a FMCG again three year thirty four point six zero percent this is the uh, fab twenty six two thousand twenty to 2020 fab data so and the other sector like a nifty 500 near about 26 percent in three years or indian vix again 23 percent so so my purpose to show you how the investments according to index or sector wise going to increase in a long term in a long term in a long term so every person have some myths about the stock market So before going to discuss about the maths, the conclusion is if we invest for the long term in a securities in a stock market directly or indirectly, directly like uh, you invest in a uh, directly stock, indirectly that means you invest uh, through SIP, systematic investment planning or uh, mutual fund or exchange traded fund you will get benefit in a long term near future so here i am going to discuss about uh, some math what is about the stock market math so basically i gather the five type of the math the first is investing in a stock equates to gambling a person think about investment in a stock market is a gambling why they think about because they have they don't have a proper a knowledge a information about 
the financial markets. So we can say the financial illiteracy. So the some people do not invest because it is too risky. So it is true. If you invest in a some single stock, you will have a very risky investment. If you invest in a good company, you still have better or than the paying against the house. But investing in a some sad company could indeed be compared to gambling. Investing in the border market is not that risky over the long term. You can have the really good return. The border market here means the sectorial market, sector, sectors, the banking sector or the index or sometime a heavy stocks, a large cap of stocks. The participant, the, the most, the participant of a stock like uh, Reliance Industries or SVI in a banking sector, Access Bank or ICIC banks. So before the investing, a person require a knowledge. So this is not a gambling. This is the pure mathematics and information based knowledge based calculative risk investment and earning the second thing the stock market is an exclusive club for broker and rich people everyone think about the stock market if they uh, if, if someone have the lot of lot of money then they can invest and they are and like the middle class if they have uh, not uh, money so they must have to stay away from the markets so this is the basically the complete math and this is the completely wrong this is uh, probably uh, one of the oldest maths you do not need a lot of money to make money in the stock market. If you invest 10,000 or 25,000 in the same portfolio, you will have the same return in a percentage. So in absolute value, the more money you have, the more return. But that is not preventing you to invest with a little money. And the next myth about the fallen angel will go back up eventually. Uh, this myth has always been around. I think uh, some people are investing heavily in a, some stock. And uh, that is going down because they believe, they think to know that it will go back up. They, the base this on the fact that is was going up before so it should continue going up they think about in a previous in a previous day they going up so that's why in a nearby future they are also going up and the summer stock will indeed recover a good stock that is going down may be available for a premium. So, however, a bad stock going down may simply indicate a direct slope without recovery. Sometimes they are going to dip, 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 dip and dip. Like uh, if I am talking about uh, Yes Bank. One year before, uh, Yes Bank is trading of approximately uh, 350 rupees and now today is about 35 rupees only so this is all the math so they and the next is the stock that goes up must come down people think about the price is going to high and this is the big fallacy. If you want to invest in the stock market, you need to be prepared for big bull and drop. 
and the last myth is a little knowledge is better than none this is the completely wrong uh, many people do not invest in a stock market because they think they are not smart enough for it they think that investing in the stock market is for genius this is really a very old math but this is still only a math you do not need to be extremely smart to invest in the stock market and basically you need to be a control of your emotion your emotion can a huge problem when you invest much more than your intelligence that means when you do not able to understand as per the specific information about the company if you do not understand the price movements then you must have to be stopped or if you invest only in the broad index such as index of entire country like a nifty or sensex or the sector index like a bank nifty a nifty it or nifty fmcg nifty 100 nifty 50 nifty 500 you need not to invest much money of course and you need to not to sell at the first sight of a loss because for the long run index always go up because the index is the indicator of the country economy index is not a particular stock like a company index is the indicator of the country economy if the country is growing your money is also growing so let us look here this is all the five maths this is the maths so the successful investing take hard work and effort and consider a partially informed investor as partially informed surgeon their mistakes could be hazardous to their financial health if you have the little knowledge surgeon cannot perform a surgery with the help of the little knowledge same as in the financial markets as based on the little knowledge you do not grow your wealth in a near future so let us took he uh, look here some indian a uh, personality they already make millions a billions of rupees from the stock market from last 30 years the first name is mr rakesh junjunwala by the profession he is chartered accountant and according to google net worth value is 20000 crore approximately a uh, 3 billion us dollar you can also check in a, a google i get this data from the google network simple searching in the search engine and mr rakesh dhamani a founder member of dmart approximately 40000 43200 crores near uh, approximately uh 5.5 billion us dollar nitin kamath is a founder member of the jeroda uh, dis uh, discount brokerage company about the 6000 600 crores and the hemendra kothari and family and vijay kheda 1000 crores by profession he is a bcom graduate mohammad anwar ahmed have the 3000 crore value of the wipro holding shares 
and Ramdeo Agrawal. By profession, he is also the chartered accountant. And the so on, the so many Asis, Kacholia, and so many. So my point is, the so, they are the people who invest in a market by the discipline. And the so many peoples, they earn from the market. But for the earning from the stock market, we need to be invest in a, a disciplined manner. So now let's uh, talk about what is a stock. So what are stock? You can see here the ONGC. This is the script or symbol symbol of the company, Nifty 50 Index Company, Bajaj Finserves, HM Motor, Tata Steel, and this is the opening price when the market is open. This is the high price. This is the intraday intraday or day price this is the day opening price day high price day low price and this is the current price is going on in between 915 to 330 and this is the 126 of the previous close price ONGC and so this is the percentage of uh, change how much change in terms of percentage and how much change in terms of point so now we talk about the bid price the buy price and the sell price buyers want to buy On particular price and seller want to sell on high price so we talk this letter so now we must have to be understand why we have to be in trade why we have to be invest in a stock market why so let us take example here What do we do with the money? There are two types of the people. First, going to bank and deposit money. And they are very happy because they earn and save money. And then after they going to bank and withdraw. After three years later, they going to with, uh, withdraw money and what he see the return is less the second type of the person they know about a money to invest in a stock market and after three years oh my god the return are so high as compared to bank saving account or fixed deposit so let us take example cost of item today is rupees 1000 rupees 1000 and our inf inflation rate is 7% then the cost of item after 5 years is going to increase 1403 rupees so if we are going to our money invest in the saving in FD or investing in the market, if we are going to invest in FD to 5.6% at the rates, after 5 years we will get only 1313 rupees. So can purchase item after 5 years? No, because rate of the inflation. And investing in the market we get at the rate of 
the price is going to what we get 1762 then we able to purchase up to five years so in our indian economy systems or indian family systems we listen uh, rich people going to be richer and poor people going to be poor why due to this inflation due to this inflation because if they are not able to beat inflation they are going to be poor in a future so now we have to be understand or we have to be develop understanding about the market if we money invest in the regular banking system or debt instrument like a FD saving accounts or employ uh, EPF employee provident funds then what happen or if we invest in a securities then what happen so let's uh, uh, look here the next so if we invest what do we invest money we get a money from the job business gifts commissions or consultancy so the investment amount is rupees 1 lakh the first option where to invest earn money this is very important and a specific question so we must have to be develop understanding regarding investments now let's uh, see what will we we get if we invest in a bank instrument bond if we invest in a stock so the first we have to analyze the money we get from the job business gift commission and consultancy and we save a money rupees of one lakh so you save money from your work job business gifts and you invest your one rupees one lakh in a year and decide to invest somewhere but he is not able to take decision where to invest money now we start to check various investment options available in the market first is the saving account the reward you will get the reward in terms of interest you earn against your deposit money in a saving account nearby 3.5 percent to up to 6 percent and your risk is zero if you invest uh, in a fixed deposit you will get the 4.5 percent to 7.25 percent and again the risk is zero if you invest a uh, employee provident fund even the every uh, employee they uh, invest in a employee provident, uh, provident fund government employee as well as the private company employee they will get the 8.65 percent compound interest rate on the deposit money monthly or the interest rate is yearly the risk is zero and the third op uh, sorry the fourth option is lend money to business government or private bond you invest in your money in the government or private bond issued by the government company like the coal india ongc or uh, rbi sbi bond any government company according to maturity and the plan the interest interest rate varies from 7.75 percent to 12 percent in the case of the government or private bond and again the risk is moderate if you invest in uh, securities the first option is the sip systematic investment plan you will get uh, as a reward 10 to 20 percent the risk is very high invest in the mutual fund you will get the 10 to 25 percent again the risk is very high if you invest to equity 10 to 30 percent again the high 
and you uh, if you invest in the startup company like you if you have the 10 lakh 20 50 or crores you are going to invest in a startup company you will get a return very high sometimes the 60 percent or sometimes the 100 or 200 percent but the your risk is very high so again if you want to be get money high if the reward is high then risk is obviously high this is the natural things but before taking the investment we need to understand why we have to be invest in securities markets so we need to develop understanding in a interest and and we need to develop understanding let's uh, understand the terminology of shares and bond so shares a stock represent part ownership of company you are legal partial owner of the company with the vo uh, voting rights or without voting rights it depends on which type of share do you hold in a company that's why all partial owner called the shareholder of the company and the bond it represents a part lender of company so you are lender so you give capital or money to company as a debt instrument like a loan so company gives you interest as per company terms and lender like you earn interest whatever situation is either company in a profit or loss company is bound to give you interest that's why bond is secure as compared to share but limited view now let uh, let's us uh, take an example a company x a company x issue 2 million shares and it's denoted by the s here now let's understand asset liabilities and equity model of company x so here this is the complete they have the assets category of a have the rupees 100 million and they have the 80 million debt that is the liabilities and 20 million here is the honor equity so now the equity value is the honor equity upon the total number of the issued shares 2 million shares so 2 million equity upon, uh, upon the 2 million shares equal to the rupees 10 this is the face value of the share now the company's liability is going to down or inner honor equity going to up because the company company going to perform in a near future then they will get earn money so the what is the liabilities liability means loan payment pending and the company acts must have to pay near future the liabilities and the honor equity so the price of share is directly proportional to profit and loss booked by company in any quarter or financial year and market participant as well market participants also drive price like the vegetable monday 
we take example previously. So now we have to be develop understanding about the interest. When we invest in a banking like the FD or a saving account or EPF, we will get here the interest. Or if we invest in a equity a shares, what we will get? We get interest or something else. So now we have to be discuss about the money invest in the debt market and equity share. So how it work? So when we invest in the debt market, we earn interest and interest is a basically the price and better to say a charge. A borrower pay to lender for letting the former use the money letter has had from a different perspective. If you ask why your saving bank account offer you interest, you would see that the bank pays you interest as you let the bank use your money. And here, if you invest in the equity, you will earn dividend and the dividend is a percentage of profit company shares with its equity shareholders and prefer preference shareholders. For the preference shareholders, a dividend is mandatory because they are paid before equity shareholder are given a single penny. For equity shareholder, a dividend is only paid when the company decide to pay off the equity shareholder out of the profit earned after paying the debt holders and preference shareholder. In an interest, rate is fixed and compound, but the dividend rate is fixed for preferred shareholder only. If you earn interest, this is taxable as per your tax slave. But the dividend, this is the tax exempted, received by Indian co company. So that is the tax is nil in a some limited amount of investment in terms of dividend. And the interest paid to creditors, lenders, and the debenture holders. The dividend paid for the prefer uh, share and equity share holders. So this is the basically difference between the interest earned and the dividend earned. So when we invest in the securities in a stock, we regularly earn dividend like interest. And this is the exempted from the tax or the price of the stock going to up in the near future, in a two year, three and five year, we, we will get dividend as well as the profit sharing. But in the FT case or the saving account case, bank use our money, but we are only get the fixed interest rate only. So, before a start to trade, we have to set our investment goal and we have to be understand how to allocate our fund in different portfolio. So now we have to develop understanding about how to set our investment goal. So first things, what are the things you want to save and invest for? We must have to be identify. Every person need a home, a car, education. Think about the comfortable retirement. Think about the children and educations, medical and other emergencies, period of unemployment and caring for parents. 
So if you don't know where you are going, you may end up somewhere. You don't want to be to end up where you want to be. You will need a roadmap, a financial plan. What do you want to save or invest for by when? A few people may stumble into financial security and wealthy relatively may die or business may take off. But for the most people, the only way to attain financial security is to solve and invest over a long period of time. So the key to financial success, make a financial plan, pay off any high interest debt, start saving and investing as soon as you paid off your debt. Your first step to making a financial plans related to all home, car, education, retirement, children's, medical emergencies, period of unemployment, parents. Then after you must have to know your current finan financial situation. You must have to know your current financial situations. How much you have cash or in a saving accounts or you have the savings cash value life. So you must have to sit down and take an honest look at your entire financial situations. You can never take a journey without knowing where you are starting from and a journey to financial security is no different. You will need to figure out on paper your current situation, what you own and what you owe. You will be creating a net worth statement on one side of the page. List what you own. These are your assets. And the other side, list what you own, other people, your liabilities. So the first column from here, this is your assets. So this is your assets, cash, saving accounts, cash value in life insurance, retirement account, real estate, home. And the other side, the mortgage balance, credit card balance, bank loan, car loan, st student loan, any kind, any such kind of the loan is your liabilities. So your net worth statement. So subtract your liabilities from your assets. This value, subtract you this value. from liabilities to assets. If your assets are larger than your liabilities, you have to positive net worth. If your liabilities are greater than your asset, you have a negative net worth. You will want to update your net worth statement every year to keep track of how you are doing don't be discouraged if you have a negative net worth. If you follow a plan to get into positive position, you are doing the right thing. And know your income and expense. The next step is to keep track of your income and your expense for every month. Write down what you and other in your family earn and then your monthly expense. Pay yourself for your family first. Include a category of saving and investing. What are you paying yourself every month? Many people get into the habit of saving and investing by following this advice. Always pay yourself or your family first. Many people find it easier to pay themselves first if they allow their bank to automatically remove money from their paycheck and deposit it into saving or investment account. 
So now the finding money to save or invest. So you must have to find money, save and invest. So this is your income statement, monthly income and monthly expense, saving, investment, housing, rent or mortgage, electricity bill, gas, oil, telephone, water sewer, property tax, furniture, food expenses, transportation expenses, loan, uh, premium and interest expense, insurance premiums and education uh, fees, recreation, child care, health care, gift and total. So this is the total expense and the monthly income. So <clears throat> you must have to first income minus your saving equal to your expense. If you follow this formula, you will get rich. What we do, we calculate our income and we make a list of expenses and we subtract income minus expense then we get the saving but for the investments you must have to be save 20 percent of your income monthly regular income the 20 percent is your saving and 80 percent is your personal use or expenses in a monthly if you do then you will get a surely wealthy success in investment or investing in a stock market or any such kind of the investment in a real estate, mutual fund, SIPs. So if you are spending all your income and never have money to save or invest, you will need to look for a way to cut back on your expenses. You will be surprised how a small everyday expense that you can do without add up over a year. Like your personal entertainment, daily pocket expenses. And some other things identify like the pay off credit card or other high interest debt. And my thing, my in, in my point of view, put away from the plastic credit card. This is the high interest rate, about the uh, 16 to 25 or 32 percent up to in some time. So put away from the credit cards. So you have to be analyze how your money work for you so the two way to make money you work for money or your money work for you if you work for money someone pays you to work for them or you have your own business or your money work for you that means you take your money and save or invest it your money earn money when your money goes to work it may earn a steady paycheck someone pays you to use your money for a period of time like interest or dividend when you get your money back you get it back plus interest or if you buy a stock in a company that pays dividend to shareholders the company may pay you a portion of its earning on a regular basis your money can make an income just like you you can make more money when you and your money work you buy something with your money that could increase in a value you became an owner of something that you hope increase in value over a time 
when you need your money back you sell it hoping someone else will pay you and more for it for instance you buy a piece of land and uh, thinking it will increase in a value as more business or people move into you your town you expect to sell the land in a 5 10 or 20 year when someone will buy it from you for a lot more money than you paid and sometimes your money can do both at the same time earn a steady paycheck and increase in value example share with the dividend so must we have to be understand the difference between saving and investing your saving are usually put into the safest place or product that allow you access to your money at any time saving product includes saving accounts checking accounts or your current accounts and certificate of deposit and some deposit in these product may be sued by the deposit insurance and creditor uh, credit guarantee corporation is wholly owned subsidiary of reserve bank of india but they are a trade off of security and ready availability your money is paid a low wage it work for you after paying off credit card or other high interest interest debt most smart investor put enough money in a saving product to cover an emergency like a, a sudden un unemployment some make surgery sorry uh, some make sure they don't have uh, up to six months for their income in saving so that they know it will absolutely be there for them when they need it but how safe is a saving account if you leave all of your money there for the long time and the interest it earns doesn't keep up with the inflation what if you save a rupee when it can buy a leaf of bread but year later when you withdraw that rupee plus the interest you earn on it it can only buy half a, of a, a bread this is the way this is why many people put some of their money in a saving but looking to investing so they can earn more over long period of time say say three year or longer so investing when you invest you have a greater chance of losing your money than when you save the money you invest in securities mutual fund and other similar invest investment uh, typically is not insured so you could lose your principal the amount you have invested but you also have the opportunity to earn more money so the basic idea is how to invest in the stock market so I discuss here about the various terms about the exchange national uh, stock exchange Bombay stock exchange and the money is growing in the from the uh, past 10 20 or 30 years and the interest bond debenture and where to invest and how to invest so if you decide to invest in the stock market then you need a demetralized account or demet accounts or trading accounts so you need to open a demet account first so you need a uh, your pen card your aadhar card pen card and aadhar card is mandatory required for the investing in india and then after you have to be take a look a broker you must have to choose any broker a broker is the person uh, a broker is the member of the stock exchange a person cannot go directly to the stock market to buy or sell shares buying and selling of stock has to be done through brokers they are individuals companies or agencies registered with and authorized by the Security Exchange Board of India to trade on the stock exchange. 
broker will charge a brokerage fee or brokerage of assistance by providing so then you get the demet account from the broker so if you want to open a demet account you can open your demet account with jiroda link are there in uh, link are there in below the descriptions or the five pesa icici securities so you can or choose any one when you open your account demet account then you must have to be think about the risk before start to trading you must have to analyze the risk so what about a risk all investment involve taking on risk it is important that you go into any investment in a stock bond or mutual fund with a full understanding that you could lose some or all of your money in any one investment while over all the long term the stock market has historically provided around 10% annual return or closer to 6 to 7% real return when you subtract for the effect of inf inflation the long term does sometimes take a rather long and long time to pay out so the question first question what are the best investment for me you must have to be asked from yourself what are investment all about it so read about the all uh, informations or document if you want to invest in a any such kind of the instrument like a mutual fund a bond or the stock market so we are here to provide the complete information about how you invest in the equity and share in a which company and how this is the uh, this is only for the educational purpose so you can understand your uh, develop your understanding so why some investment make money other don't do i need an investment professional like an investment advisor or research analyst or kind of the tips some people looking for the tips so they give which stock is going to rise and how much how should i monitor my investment this is the important questions about the portfolio how can i avoid problems so these all are we cover about in a risk management so you must have to think about this six questions and you have to be find out the answers so now i uh, try to uh add some more topic here so after the risk assessment you need to be manage your asset so asset al al allocation is most important so according to some survey you must have to invest in a 60% of money in a stock 25 in bond 10% in real estate and 5% in your cash for the emergency handling or according to your your own calculations or your your pocket how much you allow so benefit of a allocation is simplified asset allocation is an investment strategy which aims at investing in different asset class group of similar financial instrument which uh, tend to give smaller return that help in balancing the risk and return in a portfolio in according to investors goal risk tolerance and investment horizon so investment involves dividing one investment portfolio am among different asset class so see how we allocate the investment
So the asset allocation, what? Doing your money in a different investment like a stock, gas, bond and others. So according to your time horizon, invest for the one year, two year, five or 20 years. Your risk uh, appetite is how much you can take your risk and the benefit you will get the boost your returns, reduce your risk, gain confidence, stick with your plans and enjoy your investment and regular watch your portfolio this is the simple portfolio this is uh, not a real account it is for the educational purpose only so this is looks like the portfolio how you can check your portfolio in for the regular return and you can so this is the disclaimer the last and thank you very much guys keep in touch with us and thank you very much to listening me this video is very long but this is my first lecture on general uh, information or basic concept of stock markets the second lecture we will start from our topic the capital markets so like this video and guys subscribe here subscribe and press the bell icon so i will prepare more and more lectures for you so you can understand the complete fundamental technical and the financial knowledge about the stock market so Thank you very much. Have a good day.